Now that our new house is all built, I thought I'd get a new wife too. Excuse me? W what do you mean by that? I literally mean that I'm going to get a new wife. Since the house is new, I will also get a new wife. So, in other words, we are getting a divorce, Aubrey. Saying that, my husband Tristan put the divorce papers onto the table. Then, my mother-in-law Margaret, who was sitting next to me, began to check the divorce papers. After checking the papers, Margaret looked at me with a serious look on her face and said this. Aubrey, get a divorce with my son, please. Huh? My name is Aubrey, and I am 32 years old, and I am a housewife. I married my husband, Tristan, five years ago. We met up at a matchmaking party. He was a very reliable businessman, working for a major company who earned high income. And plus, he was handsome and had a very kind personality, so I fell in love with him right away. Well, I think all the women at the matchmaking party were completely in love with him. But I won the competitive match between us women and succeeded in getting him to go on a date with me. I had a great time on our first date and he was smiling and being happy for the whole time. He then started asking me out on several dates and then we officially began to go out. We had a really great relationship as a couple and after a year and a half of dating, Tristan proposed to me and we got married. I was very happy in our newly wedded life with Tristan. And once I got married, I quit my job. Since my husband earned a lot, I did not necessarily need it to work and I got to focus on being a housewife. So I devoted myself to do everything around the house and supported my husband as his housewife. I worked hard to make breakfast and lunch every day for Tristan did my best to clean the house every day and changed the menu and cooked different dishes for dinner every day. My husband always praised me and thanked me for my hard work around the house. Thank you so much for the delicious meals every day, honey. Because you're doing a great job around the house, I can do my best at work, you know? I'm very glad then. You acknowledging me like that just makes me more motivated to work harder around the house too. We have a very good relationship even as a married couple and we acknowledge each other's skills and qualities. And I thought that we would continue to have a really good relationship and live happily ever after as a husband and a wife. But... Excuse me? An a accident? The hospital suddenly called to inform me that my husband had been seriously injured when he was hit by a car while he was traveling around in the company car. As a result, my husband got unfortunately paralyzed in the lower half of his body. The company would provide him with a disability pension through workers' compensation insurance, but now he had to live all his life with the wheelchair and he was not able to work at all. With everything that had happened so suddenly, both my husband and I had lost all hope. Plus, I was pregnant at the time and was just about to welcome our new family with Tristan into the world and live happily ever after. Since my husband needed to be cared for, I was left to take care of him along with doing all the house chores. My husband was quite shocked at what had happened and had a really rough time mentally for a while. Tristan wouldn't respond to me at all when I tried to talk to him. And suddenly, I would hear him screaming in his room in which he said, Why me? and he was angrily punching the blankets on the bed. I could only watch over my husband and cry. How could this have happened? My husband was just working so hard. Even the car accident. My husband wasn't the one who had caused it, and he had done nothing wrong. But I couldn't stay sad and depressed forever. It is in times like this that I must be strong and fully support my husband. I have to give hope to our baby who will be born soon. I wiped away my tears and ran to my husband. I will do my best to support you, so we will overcome all the obstacles together, okay? I have our child in here. Let's just do our best to be able to smile with our baby. I said this as I hugged my husband, 
and he hugged me back with tears in his eyes. I decided to move forward from now on, that I would have to do my best with everything that I have. So, I then decided to look for a job that I could do from home. While taking care of Tristan and then having a baby a few more months later, I would definitely not be able to go to the office to work. Which is why I had to find a job where I could work from home. Since I was always good with computers, I decided to start working as a video editor. I began to study how to edit video clips on my own, researching and gathering information from various sources on the internet. Since I had no income while I was studying, I did my best to save money. And as I began to study about editing videos, I was able to learn some skills. So I began taking on easy jobs at a very low price at first, so that I could just gain some kind of experience on editing videos. From then on, I just kept on taking on jobs after jobs. I thought it was important to do a lot of jobs at first, so I increased my workload at an unbelievable pace. Thanks to this, my skills improved hugely after just a few months, and I gradually began to receive orders for higher priced jobs from different clients. Then, I had our baby smoothly, and a healthy baby boy was born. Our son was really adorable, and just seeing our son smile was enough to heal my busy, difficult days of caring for Tristan and working on video editing jobs. I am working hard partly to save money for my son's future school fees, but also because I was planning to build a house with an easy, accessible environment so that my husband can live comfortably in a wheelchair. I didn't tell my husband about that yet, but I have been working hard to save money to build our own home. My husband seems to have regained some of his energy as a result of my devoted care for him and also the birth of our son. Oh, Theo is so adorable. Truly, he really is like an angel. By the time he grows up, I'll try my best to be able to at least play tennis in a wheelchair too. That sounds great. I'm sure that you'll be able to move around more freely by then, honey. My husband started smiling more and more, which put my mind at ease. The multitasking of work, caregiving, housework and raising a baby was harder than I had imagined, but I could work as hard as I wanted for the sake of both Tristan's and Theo's smiles. With this in mind, I continued to work even harder. And four years have passed since then. I have saved up enough money to finally build a house. So I told my husband that we were going to build a new house. What? You saved that much money? Yes, if we build a spacious house with an accessible environment, you will be able to live comfortably and play more freely with Theo too, right? Oh wow, thank you so much, Aubrey. My husband thanked me with tears. Then he made a proposal. Well then, I have a suggestion. Why don't my parents also live with us and make the house a two-family house? What? That way, my mother can help me take care of me and raise Theo, and like that, you'll be able to focus on your work more, and we can all live comfortably, right? Ah, well, you're right. I was simply grateful for Tristan's idea. After my husband's accident, his parents came to our house regularly to check on him. My in-laws, Jack and Margaret, were very kind and nice people, and they really appreciated me taking care of Tristan. Like that, I had a good relationship with Jack and Margaret, and we were on good terms. So, I was fine with the idea of living with them in the two-family house. So, my husband and I immediately contacted Jack and Margaret. Both Jack and Margaret were very happy when we suggested that we build a two-family home together. I think that they were both quite happy to be able to be near their son, and also to live under the same roof with their grandchild. My husband seems to be in the best mood he has ever been in since that accident, perhaps because he can now own his own home and also be able to take care of his parents by building the two-family house. Tristan was talking more to Theo now, and it made me smile to see that kind of interaction between the father and son. I am sure that this will unite the family as a whole, 
and we will be able to live happily together. I was filled with hope for our future, and I continued to work hard after that. Our home was steadily being built, and finally, a two-family house was completed. This is where our new life begins. I would make lots of happy memories with Tristan, Theo, and with Jack and Margaret. I would finally be able to feel the joy again, which I had felt when Tristan and I were newlyweds. Well, that was what I thought. But when I was packing up my belongings for the move, my husband called me into the living room, saying he needed to talk to me. Just as I was wondering what on earth was going on, the doorbell rang and Margaret came over. Oh, what's the matter, Margaret? Oh, well. Tristan told me that he needed to talk to me. You didn't hear anything about that, Aubrey? What? Oh, uh, um, no, I haven't. Margaret and I looked at each other and both tilted our heads. We ended up heading into the living room, and there, my husband asked us to sit down. Oh, Mom, you've come at just the right time. What's going on? You told me that you needed to talk to me about something. When Margaret asked him that, my husband cleared his throat and then began to say something really unexpected and outrageous. Now that our new house is all built, I thought I'd get a new wife too. Excuse me? Margaret and I both let out a funny voice, and I completely froze, unable to catch up with what Tristan had said. What the heck do you mean by that? Margaret asked my husband instead of me. Then Tristan replied with a huge grin on his face. I literally mean that I'm going to get a new wife. Since the house is new, I will also get a new wife. So, in other words, we are getting a divorce, Aubrey. This time, my husband's words came easily into my mind. Now hold on. What do you mean that we're getting a divorce? I wasn't at all convinced, and I began to shout at him. Why does it become like this all of a sudden? Hearing this, my husband continued to grin and say this. Because I mean, come on, do you even look at yourself in the mirror? Your hair is dirty, your skin is rough, your face always looks tired, and lately you're even starting to show gray hair. I'm sorry, but you don't look like you're 32 years old. You look like you're 40 years old, or even an old lady in her late 40s, if you ask me. And I don't really want a wife who looks really old like that. So, I'm going to get a new, younger, prettier wife and live happily in the beautiful, comfortable, newly built home. My mind went completely blank. What in the world was this man talking about? I worked so hard to take care of my husband, worked hard to save money, and even bought the house so that he could live more comfortably. I even saved up the money all on my own and bought a house so that Tristan could live happily and comfortably. And yet, he's demanding for a divorce. What had all my efforts over the past few years amounted to? I was just speechless from all the shock. But my husband continued to talk on and on, paying no attention to me or how I felt whatsoever. You know, now everything is so convenient. I can meet new people just by video chats over the internet. I don't know if I should be saying this myself, but I am pretty good looking, you know. I told that girl that we could live in a newly built house, and that I'd receive disability pension. And that my mother would take care of the house chores and also take care of me. And once I told her, she told me she wanted to get married with me. So that's how it's all decided now. How could you? According to Tristan, the other woman is a young woman, and she was about seven years younger than him. You're just so terrible. So, you just used me and then dumped me? Well, I didn't ask for any of this, and for you to do anything, and you were just doing your best to take care of me all on your own, right? This is just unacceptable. How could Tristan even say such a thing? 
As I was being speechless, my husband wheeled over to a drawer and pulled out some papers. Here, these are divorce papers. My husband had downloaded the divorce papers, printed them out, and had them already prepared. I've already signed my part, so you can sign the rest. Mom, you should check this too. And I think I'll also ask Dad to check it too. Saying that, my husband Tristan put the divorce papers onto the table. All I could do was just sit in silence and watch everything happen. I was too shocked to move my body, even though I wanted to. Then, my mother in law Margaret, who was sitting next to me, began to check the divorce papers. I watched Margaret checking the divorce papers. Does this mean that Margaret accepted everything what my husband had said? No way. Does Margaret also think that a young, energetic woman is much better for Tristan? After checking the papers, Margaret looked at me with a serious look on her face and said this Aubrey, get a divorce with my son, please. Huh? Hearing this, I thought to myself that Margaret really didn't care about me either, after all. I guess Margaret thought that what her son said was right. I was very shocked to find out about this. Not only my husband, but also his mother, who had shown me so much gratitude and smile, had also betrayed me. And like that, I would carry a huge scar that would remain with me for the rest of my life. Thinking this, I looked down, trying to hold back my tears. But then, Margaret continued You should break up with my unbelievable, stupid son. As soon as possible, Aubrey. What? I was surprised to hear what I heard and immediately looked up at her. Tristan was also surprised at what Margaret had said. M Mom, why would you even call your own son stupid and unbelievable? Then, Margaret suddenly stood up, approached my husband, and slapped him on the cheek as hard as she could. Ouch! How horrible and terrible could you be, Tristan? Do you have any idea how devoted Aubrey has been to you for all these years? Aubrey here has been taking care of you while doing all the house chores, working and raising Theo, you know? How dare you betray her like this? You asshole! This is totally unacceptable no matter how much you had to go through that terrible accident. You really should be ashamed of yourself. My husband began to flinch as Margaret became extremely angry. I was also surprised because I did not expect Margaret to be so angry at Tristan like this. But Margaret showed no signs of her anger cooling off. I'm so sick and tired of you. I will report this to your father, and I will make sure that we will disown you, as I do not remember raising my own son to be like this. From now on, you will live on your own, Tristan. Oh, Aubrey, I'm really sorry about this, and please just get a divorce with Tristan and live with Theo in that house. And if you'd like, you can invite your own parents to live with you. What? Hey, what the heck are you saying, Mom? That house is ours, isn't it? Stop being so stupid and ignorant. Aubrey was the one who worked so hard to build that house. Which is why that house is owned by Aubrey. You can stay here and live with your young wife and have her take care of you here. N no way. She says that she'll marry me because she'll get to live in a new house and that she won't have to do any house chores or even have to care for me. If we don't get to move into a new house, then that's a deal breaker. I couldn't even care less about that. That's your own fault. What? My husband suddenly began to panic more and more. Hey, Aubrey, please, I beg you. I'll deeply apologize for what I did, so please let us start over. And let's raise Theo together, alright? And hearing what Tristan has said to me, I suddenly became logical at that moment. Ignoring my husband's words, I began to sign the divorce papers. Oh,、uh, Aubrey? You were the one who suggested for a divorce. So, why don't you enjoy your new life with your new wife? 
I will take care of Theo in our new house, so don't you worry about us. I will never ever let you near Theo ever again. Oh no! My husband had completely turned pale. Then I loaded the car with all the stuff I had prepared for the move, and we moved into our new house. I then successfully divorced Tristan, and I filed for child support from my ex-husband. My ex-husband, as expected, was dumped by that young girlfriend. Since I was at home all the time, Tristan couldn't really cheat on me, and I could not request for alimony. But instead, my husband lost many things. He has been cut off from his own parents, and he will never get to see his son again. Furthermore, he has no one to take care of him, so he has no choice but to call for helpers or go to a nursing home. No matter how much disability compensation pension he gets, it will cost him a lot of money to have a helper all day long, and I am sure it will not be enough to cover for his own living expenses and rent. But that's not my problem anymore. I hope Tristan realizes how much of a jerk he was and reflects on his own actions and what he has done. I then moved into a new two-family home with my son and my parents. I have kept in touch with Jack and Margaret since then, and we occasionally go out to dinner together so that they could see how Theo was doing. And now, at this point, I have been doing very well with my job, and I now make more money from home than I did when I was working in a company. I am now able to live happily with my family. I will continue to get along with my family and make lots of memories with them. Tristan is a lousy scumbag husband to betray his wife who cared for him and who devoted her time for him. He got what he deserved. I hope Tristan will spend his life all alone in a wheelchair by himself. I hope that Aubrey and her family have a comfortable and happy life in the new house she has worked so hard to build. Thank you for watching until the end. Please subscribe to our channel. We hope to see you in our next video.